we did not learn from the past because I found this letter from 2009 and I felt like I'd gone back in a time capsule. You guys, I came across a letter that took me into a time capsule back in time and made me realize that things might not necessarily change after this. What's up YouTube? What's cool? What's cool? What's happening? Welcome back to my channel. It's time for life. So I found this letter and it's dated the 12th of August 2009. The subject is the new influenza A H1N1 virus. Does anybody remember that thing? That was here about 11 years ago. And it was better known as the Mexican flu. It was a pandemic. And obviously this was another pandemic that was caused by a virus and spread really, really fast. So the symptoms were a fever of 38.5 degrees, headache, throat ache, muscle ache, coughing, nose flu symptoms, right? So they said, if you have any of these symptoms, to contact your doctor. Now, these were the instructions that they said that you must follow to stop the spread of this virus. Number one, you can already even guess what this is gonna be. You guessed it, washing your hands. Yep, <laughs> washing your hands with water and soap and drying it with some unused paper and throwing this paper away in the bin immediately, right? Number two, use tissues, napkins, whatever you call them, wherever you are, the disposable kind. When you're coughing or sneezing, don't touch your eyes, nose, or mouth because the virus spreads through hands and objects and can do so in this manner. And number four, open the windows or air conditioning for the needed ventilation. Number five, contact your physician as soon as possible if you have any of these fever-like symptoms. Well, but this was a bit different in the sense that if you had those type of fever-like symptoms, the your doctor would give you um, like kind of medication against like viruses. But now in, nothing out there is really working. In any case, um, I'm confused because this was 11 years ago and I remember this and I remember that this was the start of hand gels, okay? After this this started happening the hand gels were like like people were buying them like how they're buying them now and it's like in short supply and stuff like that like it was new 11 years ago that's when i really remember the rise of these hand gels right but then what happened people everybody had a hand gel and then slowly but surely everybody stopped using them everybody was frantically doing all these things that they were instructing us to do but then very soon afterwards it was over as soon as this pandemic was over everybody just went on to do normal stuff and was living their normal life and i fear that this might be the same thing with koro i don't know i don't know whether people have been really shocked by it because for me um especially the quarantine and everything people not having their freedom i feel like people are much more against all these instructions against all the rules and they want to go against the grain and they want to protect their freedom and all these type of things which is why i just think that once this thing is gone for sure for sure people are just gonna go back to normal because people are itching to go back to normal if you haven't already make sure you hit bump stump as soon as that subscribe button comment because i really want to know what you think like because you obviously like this video and learned a lot and while you're at it hit the notification bell basically what i'm trying to say is we did not learn from the past because i found this letter from 2009 and i felt like i'd gone back in a time capsule and i was like this these are the same instructions we're getting now but i've seen so many people that are not following these instructions okay these are simple things. If we were already still regularly washing our hands and all this stuff with, uh, you know, just the single use paper, especially in public, I don't get those rolls of paper, you know, that thing that you have to pull down. I made a video on that, which you can watch over here. But I don't, I don't understand those things. It's not hygienic. Everybody has been touching it. You don't know if your part is really dry or not, or whether it was dry or it was wet. And now it's dry because it's dried out, but it has still been touched by somebody else. Like, I just don't think those things are sanitary at all. But yes, these are the things that are still out there again. Using tissues to sneeze and cough, please, nobody does that. One thing that I think is good and is an upgrade from this H1N1 time is that they say cough and sneeze into your elbow. I think that's way better because nobody is necessarily gonna to touch your elbow, especially if you're having your one and a half meter distance, especially since your elbow can't, the inside of your elbow can't actually touch anything out there in the world. So that's actually very good. And then you just hope that these people go home and wash those clothes and don't come back out with it every single time again. But still, even if they did, the chances of you know infecting other people is next to none. When it comes to sneezing, it's always like a sneak attack. So sometimes you don't know when it's coming, so that's why it's hard for people to really just have a tissue handy. So I think the elbow thing is an upgrade. And the not touching your eyes, your nose, and your mouth 
because your virus, the virus can be passed on through these type of things. I mean, that's a very important one. It's not only the virus, other bacteria as well. There's so many people that have pink eye or some kind of other eye infection because they're always all up in their eyes. Like I know we get gunk in there and stuff like that, but you don't have to be in your, in your eyes every three seconds. Like leave your eyes alone. And don't forget like that is one of the quickest ways for things to go into your bloodstream as well, your eyes. Because if you look, you can see all the vessels and everything. So that's a very quick way for things to go into your bloodstream as well. So you have to be very careful with that. Hygiene is very important and now we're realizing more than ever that you having a good personal hygiene will actually affect me and everybody else. Like you have, you actually have, we have control over these things. We have control about how these things spread. So it's actually really, really important for everybody that individual people have good personal hygiene. Went back in time and saw that nothing has changed and we haven't learned any lessons. I hope that we learn our lessons. This time around, I hope that we take this thing seriously. In any case, uh, I'll see you in the next one, which will be very soon. Make time for glorious life. It's time to start what? Living it right. And I'll see you in the next video. God bless. Mm -hmm.